If you've been programming for a while, you've probably configured a HTTP server before, whether that be with Nginx, C Sharp, or even Python. But have you ever wondered how these work under the hood? That's what I wanted to explore. So here's my, I can't even write comments apparently, attempt at making a HTTP server using only Rust standard library. Now the first thing we need to establish is that HTTP does not inherently transfer data. HTTP is just a specification and nothing more. What is responsible for transferring data is TCP. This allows us to establish a temporary socket connection where the data can be shared between both parties. We use the HTTP notation to describe the data we are sending over our TCP connection. Luckily for us, Rust provides a TCP listener object that allows us to bind to a port and listen for incoming data from the browser or any other client such as curl or postman. So after my live stream died, at least it's good when you look at it from far away. Is it still dying? I set up a listener that could read an incoming connection to the TCP server. There we go. I don't know what we did differently, but that worked. What you are looking at here is a HTTP request that came from the browser. This text was sent over our TCP connection. Now, let's break down this request. The first part is the type of HTTP request we received. Each of these types describe the behavior of the server as well as the type of response to expect. The next part is the path the request is targeting. This allows us to resolve a unique piece of data or behavior from the server. The last part is the version of HTTP, which is just the version of the specification we are using. The remaining lines in this request are the headers. These provide general data for the server. In this case, we have the server host address, client the request was made with, and format the response should be in. Another thing I have not mentioned yet is the HTTP body. This contains customized information that may be useful to the server. Now I had this text, I needed my program to be able to understand it. I don't know why, but my code is extremely messy at the moment. Please. What the fuck? <laughs> this is what happens when we make- I had this issue last time. I forgot how I solved it. I mean, the, the headers are good. The headers work, which is a good sign, but we have this huge, huge string of null characters and I have no fucking clue why. This is where it was time to use my favorite string feature, the split functions. I first used the split once function, which allowed me to separate the request details and headers, as well as the body into two variables. I then split the request meter by each line, splitting the first line by spaces and the headers by colons. Once I had split up all this data, I was finally able to store it inside the HTTP request struct. We also need to pass a HTTP response to send back to the client. This provides the client the data it requested. The next step was to make this HTTP server usable to developers, because at the moment you would have to manually check the path and pass the request and response for each path on the server. Sure. This is the worst shit I've written in my life. Yeah, there we go. For this, I created a get function designed for get requests, which would take in a path and function. This would then be added to an array in the struct, which would then be searched through every time the TCP server receives a connection. Here's what the use of this get function looks like. So we're going to do a get request for the slash route. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say the content type is going to be text slash HTML. And this basically tells the browser that we're sending HTML. So I'm going to set the content to some HTML. Now we also need to make sure this is a string object instead of a string slice. And finally, all we need to do is run and test the program. Okay, so remember that we used the slash route here, so we're going to actually request the slash route, and you'll see that we actually get the HTML, which is really cool. A lot simpler than the alternative, right? Now, if you're interested in making your own HTTP server and taking it further than mine, Codecrafters have you covered. And this is what I use to help me with this project. Codecrafters provides some great guides on software projects in whichever language you choose. They allow you to test your code and progress through project challenges, as well as providing guides in your chosen language that help you complete the challenge. Not only this, but you can also check out other people's code too, among many other great features. The founders behind this project are great people, and even gifted me an Oro ring. So if you're interested, head to the affiliate link in the description below. Sadly, I didn't have time to complete all the features for this project, but hopefully you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.